As Americans get ready to give thanks and gather with family, we are focusing this week on the man who quite arguably is the father of fine dining in Cincinnati. It's been almost a year since Chef Jean-Robert de Cavell's passing. And while the people who love him will feel a void this holiday season, the many who were friends with him and worked with him continue to celebrate his life and his legacy. The table is set for another busy Friday night at La Barra Booth. We have a Wellington for two tonight, so we're just doing the garnish for that. It's all hands on deck to prepare for a calendar full of reservations. This may be Chef Jordan Broninger's kitchen now, but in many ways, it still feels like Jean Robert's. When Chef was here, like it was my responsibility, but it was still his responsibility. Now it's don't mess it up because it's all riding on you. It's a very different feeling. Chef Jordan was a competitive skater, then traveled with Disney on ice. Then Jean Robert gave him a chance that would change the course of his life and career. I told Chef, I said, I'll start wherever you need me to. I'll start in a dish tank, whatever you need me to do. If I'm going to work for somebody, I'm going to work for the best. And he said, well, I don't think you need to start there. He spent much of the next decade learning from the man who mentored hundreds of Cincinnati's best culinary talents. And then we're doing cream corn, fingerling potatoes, and broccolini on that. It's an iceberg wedge with watermelon, bacon, blue cheese, and fried green tomato. They're his recipes. Recipes which continue to attract accolades. Number three on the Cincinnati Magazine Best Restaurants list. This fall, the Inquirer's top 10 places to eat in Cincinnati. And this month, Jean Robert's wife Annette and daughter Leticia represented him in Miami as he received the top award from his peers for French master chefs in the U.S., the Silver Toque. We're carrying on his legacy. I'm doing this for him and his family. Anne Thoman began working with Jean Robert more than 20 years ago. A favorite server to customers at several of his restaurants, she followed him to Barra Boeuf. Anything you did with him was fun. Every, I mean, you could be working your face off, but you were laughing and you were so honored to be doing it with him, you know, and, and, and the end result was always beautiful. As Jean Robert battled through cancer for years and more in the closing of table, his troubles were never on display. And he taught us that. Leave your troubles at the door and you come to work. I love the fact that you decided to come back and see me again. Maitre D. Mary Lou Lin now serves as the restaurant's source of strength. Deep inside of me, I knew that I needed to continue on because it's what he wanted us to do. Apparently, so do the customers, but they're here for something more than the white tablecloths, wine selection, or caviar carefully placed by Chef Jordan. I think because John O'Berry was always so kind to everybody, and he felt that he had a relationship with everybody that walked in the store, be it to say hello, how's your dinner, and thank you for joining us. It's just the John O'Berry thing. It's been quite an experience. It's probably one of the best opportunities I've had at any point in my life to, mm. to do something that I feel is important for the city and also to, to keep working in the way that he would want us mm. to is just a tremendous opportunity and, and a blessing. I was just so grateful that our paths crossed and that I got to work for him, you know, and everything he put out. You know, he was like this beautiful gardener planting seeds all over the city and now everything is in full bloom, you know. He started this culinary institution, if you will, of the city. Without him, there wouldn't be anything. Jean Robert believed that cooking was a way of showing love. And his love affair with Cincinnati continues even after his passing. I spoke with his wife, Annette, about how her family is moving his legacy forward by improving the customer experience, cultivating the next generation of culinary talent in the city, and even growing their company. And I'll bring that to you tomorrow. 
right here on Local 12. One thing I just wanted to add, you know, even though they are missing him so much, and it's it's like any loved one, you're missing them, you're sad, but they have so much joy in that mm -hmm. restaurant mm -hmm. in continuing what he did, mm -hmm. and I think it's because of his example. Like, no matter what he was going through, he did it with joy yeah. and love. And, and he, you can yeah. tell in that chef, you yeah. know, mm -hmm. this is doing it for him and for the city. And at times where he was very ill, yeah. I mean very ill, he mm -hmm. was still showing up and he, he was. was still showing the next generation mm -hmm. how to do and always had that sparkle. I talked about his smile earlier, but there, there was also in that sparkle eye. in his eye. Yeah. And, I, mm -hmm. and I think he survived as long as he did because he still had that. He had mm -hmm. his work, yeah. he had his restaurants, he had this whole family in the city around him. And I think, you know, that's why he was able to keep going as long as he did. I yeah. know you, you mentioned like it's hard for restaurants to stay alive and his right wife now. mentioned in good customer service mm -hmm. and improving, you know, that's gonna what keeps it open. Yeah, that's right. And you'll hear more tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. But I really am thankful to everyone yeah. for talking. And that was with a beautiful me. piece. That was, that was good. Thank you.